Okay, so this time we're looking for the maximum and minimum two points, x and y. Um, this 4 moves it up 4, and this pi over 3 makes it 2 pi divided by pi over 3, and what I mean by it is the period. So that's 2 pi times 3 over pi. So that makes this 6 because the pi's cross out. So I'm going to label my 6. Half of that is 3. 1 and a half. 4 and a half. We always split it up into 4 parts. And so I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4. And now it's centered at 4. It's going to go up and down 1 from there. The sign starts in the middle. So I'm going to start in the middle point and repeat at the middle point. I'm going to go up, come back down to the middle, come back down to the minimum, and so there you have it. We're looking for this point and this point. So max is 1.5, comma, and we've gone one up from four. So that's 5. And the min is 4.5, comma 3. It's 1 fourth inside with the x, and so it's affecting the period. And so we're going to do 2 pi divided by the 1 fourth. 2 pi times 4, multiply by the reciprocal, 8 pi. And the minus pi is going to shift it to the right pi. So mark your period, 8 pi. Half of that is 4 pi, 2 pi, 6 pi. Now the trick is, is that it's only going to the right pi, and so our starting point is actually going to be, all of our main points are going to be halfway in between all of these. Pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi, and 9 pi. And so cosine starts at the peak. and it started at pi because it went to the right pi. It's going to repeat by 9 pi because that's 8 pi after pi. And then halfway in between that is 5. And so it's going to hit the minimum or the x-intercepts. So our first max is that pi, and it's at 1. And our first min is at 5 pi, negative 1. All right, let's keep going. So now we're actually going to graph it, um, label the scale on the axes, otherwise it's just going to look like a little curve, and you've paid attention if you can see it's a squiggly line. Max and min lines and mid lines, so those are just those dashed lines, and then plot five points for each curve. So, cosine, um, period is 2 pi, it's been cutting it in half, and half, and half, pi, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. Amplitude is 1, so it means it goes up 1, down 1 from the peak, from the middle line, and so I draw these dashed lines to help me stay in between those two, and so peak to peak, notice peak, middle, valley, middle, peak, and so then connect them with a smooth curve. Do not make these look like V's, it's very easy to do so. And there you have it. How's the sign different? The only thing that's different is where it starts. So I'm going to label this.
So y is this cosine of 0. The x value is 1, and that's why the cosine graph starts at 1. Where the sine of 0 is 1, because the sine value is the y value, and, sorry, sine is 0, and so that's why it starts at the 0, goes up, comes back down, and back down, and so there's our max and our min line. Okay, so we have the negative reflect, makes it start at the bottom, and the 2 shifts it up to. So, it's going to be centered at 2. The amplitude is 4. And so from 2, it's going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4. And so that's the min line. And it's going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4. And so that's the max line. Period is still 2 pi. And we talked about how it was a cosine graph that was reflected, so it's going to start at the valley at the bottom. It's going to repeat by there. Halfway in between, it's going to be at the peak. And so we plot our five points. And there you have it. The three. That's the midline. And this shifts it left pi over 2. So I'm going to mark my axis. The period has not changed. This is negative pi over 2 because this is pi over 2. And the reason I'm marking this over here is because we're shifting it, and that's where we're going to start. We went up 3, and so the middle line is 3, and the amplitude is 1. And so, sine starts in the middle and goes up. So we're going to start in the middle, but that middle has been shifted to the left. So then we're going to go up to the peak, down to the valley, sorry, back to the middle, down to the valley, back to the middle. And so our ending, it repeats by the time we hit 3 pi over 2 because we started at negative pi over 2. And so there's your, your one cycle. Remember it keeps on going left and right from there. And negative 2 shifts it down 2 because this is added. You can think of the down 2 as being moved over here. The 3 is the amplitude. Again, that minus 2 is the midline. And the cosine makes, or the pi, makes it 2 pi divided by pi which is the period of 2. So I'm going to shift this down to, we said the midline was negative 2, I start there, the amplitude was 3, and so we're going to go up to 1 from negative 2, and down to 1, 2, 3, negative 5. The period is 2, 
cut that in four parts. You get one half, one, one and a half or three halves, and two. The cosine starts, it's a positive cosine because the three is positive. So it's going to start at the peak. It's going to end at the peak. Valley, middle, and middle. And so there's our Okay. For number seven, we're going backwards. We're writing the function. And for the sine or the cosine, it doesn't matter. But so you have to think of we're filling in any and all. Is it a plus or a minus? Is it a, what's the amplitude? Is it a sine? Is it a cosine? Did the period change with the B? Did it move left or right? And what's the midline? with the plus k. And so between 2 and 5, that midline comes from the average y's. Five plus a negative one divided by two is two. So that's your plus k. Amplitude one two three and so I can tell the a equals three because I went up three and down three from my midline period valley or peak to peak period equals two so to find my b I do what we did in previous stuff b equals 2 pi, the period, divided by the actual period now. So b has to be pi. What I'm doing is um, b equals 2 pi divided by the period. And did we move left or right? Does it need to be reflected? I see it starting at the peak, and so that's a cosine graph. that hasn't been shifted at all. Cosine we need the amplitude to be 3 so we stick the 3 in front. The B has to be pi. We haven't shifted it left or right so we don't need any of that so pi x plus 2. Other answers possible Maybe you saw the sine function and saw a negative sine function that was shifted to the right one half. And so that would be y equals a negative 3 sine. Still the same b, but it was shifted to the right one half, so minus one half plus the 2. That would also work. Okay, let's try another and we'll come back to that after this break.